Welcome everyone, Costine here with another discussion about Nurgle. Yes, another one. I know I've done numerous videos on the subject, but until Creative Assembly does actually imp implement certain updates for Nurgle, maybe some will actually come with 4.2. We can only hope, really, on that particular subject. But suffice to say, Nurgle has one of the worst campaigns in the game. Actually, it's Kugaf that has one of the worst campaigns. I imagine whichever Legendary Lord that they're going to release, Far Thrones of the King, will probably have a better campaign. We saw at the Changeling how Creative Assembly is willing to do things, let's just say, in a bit of a different way in order to make for a better campaign. Like, Siege is a horrible campaign by every metric imaginable, and yet... CA did certainly improve that situation with respect uh, to to the Changeling. Now, it didn't work, because although the Changeling certainly has a lot of power, they made it an objective-based campaign, and then the objectives don't work. Various issues that really contribute to a less-than-stellar situation, I would argue. That's kind of the problem that exists over there. Or at least... The biggest problem, really, with respect to that. Now, with Kugaf, Kugaf is a good lord. Like, in terms of his own combat potential, in terms of his skill line, he certainly works. His faction effects, though, just aren't really workable. Oh, he gets a recruitment cost benefit for Nurglings. Recruitment cost benefits are useful, to be certain, but what is more important with units is um, upkeep. If Kugaf were to get the major upkeep benefit, that would be a different thing. Okay, he does get the replenishment benefit. But the problem that... But the problem I would say that exists with uh, with that in particular is like... Replenishment for Nurgle is not really that big of a problem. Because, well, Nurgle has plenty of heroes. It's one of the few advantages they do have. So you're not really going to be struggling from that particular uh, perspective. What you will struggle with is, with is getting any kind of unit that you can afford because basic plague bearers, which are a very basic unit, remember that, basic plague bearers are 175 upkeep. You have genuinely one of the worst economies in the entire game. It's not... It's not a reliable economy, you're not generating a lot of money, even the even the units you're maintaining. You might say, oh, Nurglings are cheap. Sure, but they're also incredibly weak. Now, as weak as, say, you know, let's say Empire Spearmen, for instance, the basic version, or Bretonian Peasants. But they're not necessarily too far away from either of those, really. So, the only unit you can recruit with any kind of reliability, and even then not so much are units that are incredibly weak. And this wouldn't necessarily be a problem, but you start in a border situation. You start in a border situation My next to Gorst, who has a minus 100 aversion against you. Speak that is genuinely God. not a great state of affairs to deal with. So Those when you're playing this campaign, you're going to be playing against a legendary lord that has a substantially better army, can recruit significantly more units than you, and is designed to really hard counter. Like, it's one of the... It's not the worst start of a campaign I've seen, personally, but it's certainly up there as one of the worst starts that you can ever have in any uh, particular campaign in this game. Why exactly Creative Assembly decide to put them on the Dragon Isles? Like, I understand from maybe a lore perspective, perhaps, there's some logic to it. But you just end up with not a great dynamic to deal with. Because you have one army of Nurglings up against an army of Mega Zombies by Gorst, and they're Mega Zombies from the very beginning. You're going to struggle to win that battle. And that is really the problem. And you, it's not like you can easily replace your units either. You can't just, like every other, virtually every other race, except Warriors of Cast, and even Warriors of Cast have a better recruitment system. You can't just like, oh, I'll uh, get a building and I'll recruit as many units as, as I want. Nurgle is using a variant of the unit recruitment system that existed in Thrones of Decay. 
except it's worse than Thrones of the Decay in every way, shape, or form, because in Thrones, uh, in, sorry, in Thrones of the Decay, Thrones of Britannia, in Thrones of Britannia, you could choose what you were going to get, right? And you could reasonably, reasonably so, afford the units you wanted to recruit. Here, we're in an early situation, and yes, this is not good. <laughs> Alright, let's just do it there. Um, in an early situation, I don't have any kind of units right here, or not that many units. You do start with some decent amount of units. You can get Nurglings available in uh, in the campaign. And actually, I'm researching the wrong thing. My bad. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, I, I misclicked there. So I wanted to get Highly Infectious uh, for Fever. That's uh, another thing to talk about. Like, there's research here. Like, Cast Wasteland growth is, like, pointless when you don't even start in Cast Wasteland. Yeah, I did a whoopsie right there. But what happens in this campaign is you flat out run out of units to recruit. The one thing you can do with uh, Kugath is if you are playing him, you can get the Plague that summons one Nurgling unit when a Plague is spread. And you don't want Plagues to spread, but the problem with that system inherently, beyond the fact that... Beyond the fact that it is only one unit that you're getting from that, uh, the inherent issue of that system is it's a very, very slow-paced system. And essentially, the problem in this campaign is it's one of the worst campaigns to play because your opponents are just going to be able to build two, three, four armies to go against you. Like, I, I don't even want to imagine how invading Cafe, and you should avoid it at all costs in this campaign... I don't want to imagine how invading cafe, cafe in this campaign would be. Because you just don't have a lot of units. Like, beyond the cost. Beyond the poor economic situation you're dealing with in this particular campaign with many units that are just too expensive for you to be able to reasonably recruit, you're flat out just not going to be able to get many units like if we look at the situation what do i have like okay let's just cancel that for a second to take a look over here what do we have here oh i can get the beast of nurgle or i can go get the plague bear and then nothing nothing except nurglings if i get that particular plague so if i lose this army that's it game over <laughs> game over man now sure you can maintain a lot of nurglings cheaply Undeniably so, with things like, uh, with this kind of item, absolutely. But, like, again, these are not great units. They have no armor, they're, lead they're demonic units, so and they ha don't have the best leadership in the world. And, and the problem with that is, like, if they start breaking, they'll just collapse. And you might say, oh, you can just recruit a lot of them very easily. Not, not quite as much as you might think in this campaign. So even getting two stacks of troops. Now, you can take advantage of the immense hero capacity that Nurgle has, because every resource building gives you one hero capacity. That's good, undeniably so. You can get a good amount of heroes here. But every like every unit, you have this awful cycle. If we're looking at uh, buildings, we, we have this awful cycle. And the buildings themselves, from the very beginning, are incredibly expensive. Like, you're paying the highest cost for any building in the game and then you have to wait for turn after turn you have to wait a lot just to get a couple of units you can't just recruit oh i'm gonna recruit cast warriors of nurgle no i'm gonna recruit a bunch of crap units like let's say you know let's let's look at the advanced military buildings right let's say i wanted to get some chosen this would take an enormous amount of time to be able to get chosen of nurgle with great weapons a ridiculous amount of time and the building here is ten thousand. Now, if you do get the Massive Empire, certainly you will have money in that particular case, but you're never going to be able to maintain as many armies as other factions. You can survive with post-battle loot, you can survive with selling settlements to the AI, you can survive with sacking settlements, because you can get a decent amount of income uh, from uh, sacking settlements or when it's plaguing, uh, spreading a plague. If we look at some of these plagues, there are 
some really solid benefits, in particular the Black Plague, to be sure. There are some nice benefits. So if we, uh, so it, so if we look at, um, so if we look at the this one, we just need to get the gut rot, um, wherever that one is, and we need to get the weeping eyes, and then I will be able to so gut rot and others, and then I'll be able to get the hundred percent come from looting and sacking settlements. But I don't really think that having to spend so much time getting a plague unlocked just to get the 100% income when your economy is basically non-existent, then God rot, yeah, spray the plague this one 50 times. That is like dozens and dozens of turns to be able to unlock that. Like once you do get the hero recruitment capacity unlocked and you do get plague ridden in all provinces, like yes, once you do that, you will have you will be in a good uh situation like once you get the cultists of nurgul once you get the exalted heroes of nurgul the plague ridden once you have access to all of that you will be you will be able to mass a lot of hero only armies and those are really powerful but like relying on the units relying on the economy relying on building settlement buildings is not really workable in this campaign On another note, another problem with Nurgle is you can actually vassalize through diplomacy. Now, that's great, right? There's a good amount of power, good amount of potential through that system. What's the issue with Nurgle? And in general, with diplomacy, beyond the significant amount of aversion that a lot of factions do feel towards you because you're a stinking demon of Nurgle if you're playing Kugaf, the issue that you have in this particular campaign as Kugaf is the fact that... The building system that Nurgle has is so unique and so expensive that diplomacy training settlements for the diplomatic gains doesn't quite work. To explain that particular situation, you need to understand how vassalization is going to work. An AI faction is always going to value certain settlements more than others, like ports, landmarks, those kind of things, right? That is an important factor to always remember when you are tackling the AI. The issue is your building system as Kugaf is so unique in the game that what ends up occurring here, uh, that w what ends up occurring in this particular campaign is that when, um, when you take a settlement, you will have no structures in it. Uh, you will have no structures in it. And you will also not be able to easily build structures so you can sell it to the AI and thus vassalizing factions for diplomacy will be a very difficult thing in Kugaf's campaign. And beyond the severe restrictions on recruiting units, the severe restrictions on the economy and not having a reliable economy, beyond all of those particular problems that you have in a Kugaf campaign, you also got to talk a bit more about climate. Not the starting position, because you can take jungle. And maybe it would make sense for him to be on Lustria, to be honest with you. Just the perspective. But here's the odd thing. So you've got a lot of climates, and many of them next to you. Cafe, wasteland, all that. But you know what you don't have that works for you? Mountain and magical forest which are directly north of you. You see the mountains of Mornia? Don't go there. <laughs> you already have the most expensive stru structures in the game by far from the very beginning of your campaign, and you're surrounded by mountains. They are not great climate. Then you've got the desert doesn't work for you. And w what is the campaign plan here? Like, if you look at the victory conditions, like, you gotta defeat Kazul for whatever reason, and Gorst. Gorst makes sense, Karakazul less so. Then you gotta hop on down here to deal with siege. Never mind that not all of the terrain over here, like this is a similar problem Teclas has. You got the jungle, but you don't have anything else over here. Some of the best decisions you can make is just go ahead, go into the empire. You can do so. There's uh, there's the possibility of using this particular transport, this particular canal, the Uskulak Canal, to get there. 
So you could abandon your starting position and head on over there, waste an enormous amount of time in a campaign and yeah, conquer the empire. Like I feel Festus would handle the starting position much better because Festus does not have these problems in his campaign. Far from it, Festus would probably end up obliterating Gorst. That's the sad part really with, uh, with Nurgle when you really dive into it. It's not like Nurgle is such an awful race. Like, Nurgle units are strong. Like, Nurgle infantry is some of the strongest in the game, if you actually get it. Uh, Nurgle demons, well, less so, sure, but the power that really exists in this campaign is not to be underestimated, I'd, I'd argue fairly strongly uh, here. If you could actually access it. But you can't. Because limited economy. This was one of the worst. This was probably the worst race when the game came out. Well, that's or ogres. I think the jury's out on that. What do, what do you think is worse, the ogres or Nur Nurgle? I've done plenty of polls on this channel. <laughs> More, it sometimes Nurgle wins, sometimes ogres win. Let me know what you guys think. Personally, I detest Nurgle as I've been dealing with him a lot in real life. Almost had a run in with uh, a deadly plague quite recently. Turned out to be a false alarm, but still. Yeah, not a pleasant experience with Papa Nurgle in real life. What can I say? Costine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.